Hey there everyone, this is Cloud Chief, and in today's video I am going over Fort de Henneteel uh, Delve. The interesting thing about this delve is that there's kind of like a general mechanic overview for kind of all the NMs in the zone, and that's pretty much that you need different weapon types. Before we get into the NMs though, I just want to touch real fast that the entrance to Delve is in a course Fort de Henneteel. It's at E7. It's pretty much north of uh, the number four Biv or the home point crystal if you have that. You pretty much just need to kind of go a little northwest from either of them and then you'll need to do a colonization reef so you can cross the water and go north and then that's where the veil is. The other nice thing about this zone is that the actual, you know, delve zone is pretty straightforward. Uh, the first area you kind of enter, you can go to the right or left. Um, you'll have to probably go to the left to kill an NM, but then after that, you're just going to keep going, you know, to the right from where you enter. And it's pretty much a straight shot until you get to the boss room. So, very easy map. You, you sh really shouldn't have any problems getting lost. The first thing I'm going to touch on is Faded Cracklaw. And this is the Adeline crab types that kind of do, like, frontal AoE for all its normal attacks. This guy's pretty straightforward and simple. His gimmick is that whatever damage type you're damaging with, he will build resistance to it, but then he will take more damage to other weapon types. So as long as you're bringing in multiple weapon types, uh, you shouldn't really have a problem taking him down. Uh, he does have a TP move that also gives him, you know, immunity of magic for a very short period of time, but that's not really anything to worry about. So, you know, just make sure you have multiple weapon types and you should be able to take him down without too much of an issue. The next NM that I'm going to touch on is Aberrant Ergonite. And this guy is pretty straightforward for the most part. He has all your typical Ergonite moves. The gimmick with him is the more Enfeebs he has, the more damage he will take. So just trying to stick as many Enfeebs on him as possible will help increase your damage. The only other thing to really note about him is if he goes into his shell, he will get a 10 count Doom. But consider he'll be in his shell he won't be moving you can just run out of range and you, the doom effect will wear off so other than that he's just pretty straightforward just you know make sure you're sticking in Phoebes to make it easier next thing I'm to touch on is Diviganting Jaggle if I'm saying that right uh, thing about him is he doesn't actually have like different weapon types uh, per se how you know the other ones do this guy's gimmick is that he will rotate through doing uh, you know different elemental uh, nukes so essentially it's gonna start in a, a random order so don't think he's gonna start where I'm gonna go but after that he will cast two spells of that element and then rotate to the next element going light dark fire ice wind earth lightning water so he will rotate through in that order and he will cast like gone jaw spells he will cast in phoebes like aoe dispel paralyze silence break poison stun etc so that's the only thing you need to really note is that he's just going to rotate through the spells but also if say he's casting fire spells that means he's going to absorb fire magic so that will heal him and he will be weak to you know whatever the opposite of that element so in that case you know if he's casting fire you would want to be doing water damage ideally to do additional damage and that's pretty much it for the jaggle the next item that I'm going to touch on is Neveric, if I'm saying that right, and this is an Oribon NM, so one of the giant fish from the uh, White Gate zones with the uh, like light bulb antenna things. And he doesn't have a weapon type gimmick, however, for him, he actually has one, you won't see his HP. So his HP will be, uh, you know, invisible, so you don't know what, how much HP he has. And as long as he has his antennas, he will have access to two particular TP moves. Uh, Hypnic Lamp 
and Mayhem Lantern. Hypnic Lamp will put to sleep anyone who is looking at the NM. So if you're facing the NM when it goes off, you're likely to get slept. And you can turn around from it, but you have to be really fast. If you're not quick, like really quick, like almost before he even readies the TP move, you're probably going to get slept or charmed, as in the same mechanic happens for Mayhem Lantern, except for that is AoE charm if you're looking at it. So, the charm is kind of the biggest threat with him. However, if you stand in front of him and you do critical hits, you can actually break his antenna. If you break his antenna, you will then see his HP, and he will no longer do the sleeper charm move. So, once you break his antenna, he becomes significantly easier. And that's really the only thing with him. He does have some TP moves that have some annoying in Phoebes, but he's honestly not that hard. Um, just like I said, make sure that you're trying to avoid charm as best you can or handle it however your party best can and he shouldn't really be too much of an issue and the last normal nm for this zone is i'm sure i'm gonna say this wrong crab akarapu so this is the uh like giant crab that was like the void walker tier 3 void walker nm so it's a giant crab he has all the uh TP moves that the giant crab moves do. Uh, the gimmick with him is that the more of one type of damage you do to him, he will build resistance to it, um, but then be weaker to the other, and that's physical and magic. So you want to try and have a balance of some physical and some magic damage. So, you know, the more physical damage you're going to do, the more resistance he's going to build to it, and the weaker he'll be to magic. So that's about it for him there's not really much to say about him he is pretty easy just make sure you're using a mix of uh, magical and physical damage and you shouldn't have uh, too many problems with him and now on to the boss Dakuwaga now this guy is pretty simple for the most part but he has a lot of different mechanics and if you do a couple things wrong with him he will make you pay for it so first off to note that the shark boss will have his HP uh, shrouded. The thing is, for his HP to show, it'll happen at different times, and I'll get to that in a second. Um, so, he will do different things at different percents of HP. So, from 100 to 75%, he's going to be resistant to blunt damage, but he's going to take extra piercing damage. From 75 to 50, he's going to be strong to piercing, but weak to blunt. From 49 to 25, he's going to take uh, less damage from magic, and he's going to take more damage from slashing. And then for his last 25%, he's going to be resistant to slashing, but more susceptible to magic. Also, the NM casts water, ice, and wind-based spells. And different spells will be active at different times. I wouldn't really worry about it too much. And so every time his HP drops to 25%, so like when you get him to 75, 50, or 25%, he is going to gain an aura. Uh, once he gains the aura, he will actually have increased magic damage, and you also can't stun him. He will also do a move called Karcherian Verve. And this is what gives him the aura. He'll do this immediately after you get him to the threshold of HP. So as soon as you get him to 75, as soon as he's done casting a spell or finishing a TP move, he will then do that TP move, and that will give him the aura. So after he does Karcharian Verve and actually has the aura up, his next TP move, which he will do shortly after, he doesn't need to wait till he has 100 TP to do it, is going to be Marine Mayhem. So, Marine Mayhem, if you are less than 5 Yalms away from the NM, you're going to take water damage. If you are between 5 Yalms and 20 Yalms, it is an instant KO. No matter what gear you have, whatever, if you are in that range of 5 to 20 Yalms, it is an instant KO. If you are more than 21 Yalms away from the NM, then you won't die and you won't take any damage. So if you are a range attacker or a mage, it is highly recommended that you make sure you're at max distance for him so you're not going to get instantly KO'd. And obviously, melees and tanks need to be right up on him so that way you're just going to take the water damage and not get instantly KO'd. 
He does have another move called Tidal Guillotine, and if this does substantial amount of damage, it'll just instantly KO you. So, but as long as the tank is keeping hate and no one's standing in front of the NM, it shouldn't really be a problem because if it does low damage, it's just going to do the damage. If it does like high damage, then it's instead of just doing damage, it instantly KOs you. It's kind of a weird uh, TP move. Um, but as long as your tank's holding hate, it really shouldn't be too much of an issue. And then the only other thing to note is uh, he will take additional thunder damage when his water ore is up. So if you have like a black mage or scholar or some nuker, uh, doing thunder damage when the water aura is up, it'll do a decent amount of damage, and it is recommended. And that pretty much wraps it up for the Fort de Henetio, uh delve. It's easier than Battlegrounds, in my opinion. If you got some value out of this, and this guide helped you out, go ahead and leave it a like, and may you have success in all you do.